What's crack, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG, big dogs. Got to eat. Uh, this is more of an impromptu show, right? We had a lot of a lot of things happening yesterday. A lot of moves made. A lot of big fantasy impacts. I've been summoned by the by the crevice of the Twitter fantasy football sphere to make these on demand videos. Listen, it's tough for me to do on demand videos in season. You want on demand stuff? Fucking sign up for Verizon Files or something. All right. Can't be doing it all the time. Come in a day later, which means we're a day smarter or a day wiser, a day of researching people's terrible takes on the situation. So we know how to attack it from every angle, all right? We're going to talk about Odell Beckham Jr. to the Rams. We're going to talk about Cam Newton to the Panthers. If you're new to the channel, make sure you sign up. We're talking about everything fantasy football for the remainder of the season, dynasty fantasy stuff in the off season, a lot of lifestyle content as well. So we like to have a little fun here. I don't know why I said sign up. Just fucking, I've been doing this for 10 years and why would I not say subscribe? Whatever, subscribe to the damn channel. Before we start breaking it down what we must do is tuck our shirts in stop yelling and let's eat So we've got Cam going to the Panthers, one-year, $10 million deal. We've got OBJ going to the Rams, chose them a free agency over Packers, over the Saints, over, you know, whoever, Chiefs, all that nonsense. Uh, one year up to $4.25 million. Now that number is, uh, we're going to start with Odell here and break break down this whole situation. That number is the upper limit of what he can make. Most of that is incentive-based around the team. All right, so if they make the, I believe it's either make the Super Bowl or win the Super Bowl, he ends up hitting probably the max of that deal. It's not, you know, it's not statistical based, which is good for him because he can continue to be trash at the wide receiver position and still, you know, he can catch the bag while he's not catching balls. So good for him and good for his agent to pull that off with seven weeks left in the season. What I'll say, the overarching opinion for me on this is I'm really high on this move for OBJ as both a player and fantasy respective. All right, I think he could be pretty damn good for fantasy and pretty quickly. Let's break down every player involved, what it means. Matt Stafford, great for him, obviously, right? This is not a surprise here. Cooper Cup. Now, Cooper Cup probably lowers his weekly ceiling a little bit. They run three wide receiver sets like 85 to 90% of the time. It's the largest, it's the highest rate in the NFL by a pretty significant margin. I hear a lot of stats being thrown around like four wide receiver sets, only three, 4% of the time. It's like, yeah, no shit. They're not, Van Jefferson's out of the picture now, all right? You don't bring in OBJ at this point in the season to continue to play Van Jefferson and four wide, it, it's not happening, all right? Van Jefferson's, kiss him goodbye. They're going to run a lot of three wide receiver sets, which means as soon as Odell learns the playbook, he's going to be on the field for a significant portion of these snaps. The difference between Van Jefferson and OBJ is that Van Jefferson is not a high volume player, right? He'll catch on his good days. He'll catch like three, four, maybe five passes uh, where Cooper Cup's catching nine, 10. OBJ is the type of player who can command and catch six, seven, eight balls in a given game, which is where the weekly ceiling for a guy like Cooper Cup comes down. Cooper Cup still clearly far and away the wide receiver one in fantasy football. Like this doesn't really change where I rank him. He's not going to end up having the Calvin Johnson type season anymore, okay? And honestly, that kind of makes me feel better about life. Like something about that made me feel fucking weird, the fact that Cooper Cup was about to break Calvin Johnson's season records, like cuz he's not going to be considered one of the all-time great wide receivers. So, I feel like this was like the universe's way of shifting things into the way that they should be. All right, Cooper Cup, still phenomenal fantasy option that you're not moving at any cost. But Odell Beckham probably brings the weekly ceiling down a little bit because Odell Beckham is where it's like Robert Woods, you know, he had the one big week, but he's not really ta he's not really capable of taking over and becoming like the alpha in that offense at, the, at this moment. Where I think on any given week, OBJ could be that guy, which is going to hurt Cooper Cup. All right, but still wide receiver one in fantasy, no questions asked. Robert Woods definitely hurts him, all right? Woods has been kind of surviving on just being part of this great offense with a ton of scoring opportunities. He has topped uh, 70 receiving yards, gone over 70 receiving yards just twice this year. Now, the way I'm looking at it is like, I got a lot of pushback on this take on Twitter. Robert Woods, he's not going to fall off the face of the earth, right? He's a, he's a very good wide receiver. I think this could be similar to the uh, Cincinnati Bengals situation where we have three awesome wide receivers. Like we've seen Tyler Boyd and we've seen Robert Woods, both of them, honestly, they already have a resume that tells you they're great wide receivers, right? We've seen them operate as the ones in their respective offenses before, but only where like, you don't want those guys being your ones in the offense, right? And both teams clearly told us that by the signings and everything that they've done. They can do it if they're forced into it, but no team wants to do that, right? But they're capable of doing it. Then when you put two alphas around them, right? You put T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, you put Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham, you see what happens. They go from being a high volume player to 
a not high volume player. And that becomes a little bit of a problem. I think this now, listen, there's similar situations. The Ram situation is obviously a much better situation than the Bengals situation for the weapons, for the passing offense, for the scoring opportunities and everything like that. But I think this is going to be a big hit to Robert Woods once Odell Beckham gets situated. Now let's talk about Odell Beckham, right? Robert Woods is like, he's been great for the last six, seven weeks, right? Since he had that big game, he's been a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. I think we're going to be looking at him as more of like a semi-inconsistent low end wide receiver two, wide receiver three going forward. Like if that maybe more of a consistent wide receiver three, we look at o- Odell Beckham Jr. A lot of people are going to say like Odell Beckham's wash, right? I-, I got a lot of pushback because I compared the two strong receivers in Cincinnati to the LA Rams, where it's Odell and Cooper cup as the T Higgins, Jamar chase and Robert Woods to Tyler Boyd. A lot of people were like, nah, OBJ is the Tyler Boyd. I don't think that's the case. One of the first things I did, and I was happy that Matt Harmon did this, right? Matt Harmon runs reception perception where he actually charts players as receiving routes or whatever throughout the season. He usually does it in the off season, but he did it for OBJ because this was a special circumstance. He looks at success rate versus man coverage versus press coverage versus zone coverage. And these are the following scores for Odell Beckham. 71% versus man, 76.9 versus press and 84.3 against zone. And that would be 73rd, 89th, and 85th percentile success rate relative to all other scores in the history of reception perception. So Odell Beckham still separating and still operating at a very high level as an NFL wide receiver, right? He's still good. The Browns passing offense, however, isn't. It wasn't. And I'm sure everyone saw the video that OBJ's dad put up um, about him being open all the time, whatever. Listen, OBJ is not in his prime anymore, but he's still a well above average wide receiver in the NFL, especially at separating. Uh, and that's probably an understatement. And he's still explosive. He's still very explosive. And this is an explosive offense that's going to give him the opportunity to actually showcase what he does have left. So if you think OBJ has anything left, they're going to be able to, McVay's going to milk them titties for whatever they got left in there. All right. The one concern I guess I do have with OBJ is, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not concerned about the explosiveness. I'm a little bit concerned about the shoulder, right? Inside injury said the Rams added another powerful weapon to their offense today with the signing of Odell uh, Beckham Jr. But how much does their new receiver have to offer given his two bum shoulders? You see Rams new wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. still dealing with grade three AC sprain and a torn labrum. Sprain should be fully healed in six to eight weeks while the labrum tear increases risk of dislocation and additional tears. So that's a concern. We're never going to be able to predict what happens there. So just kind of throwing that into the mix. And I do expect OBJ to play pretty much right. I don't know if he's going to play this week. They play Monday Night Football against the Niners. I'd be surprised if he played, but if he's healthy, maybe they get him in there for 20, 25% of the snaps. Luckily for him, I guess luckily for him, they have a bye next week. So you look at their schedule. It's San Fran on Monday night, bye the week after that. And then they get the Green Bay Packers on November 28th. So he'll basically have two and a half weeks to learn the playbook. And that's, in my mind, that's enough time to be like a 70% plus snap player, okay? So you get Green Bay, which is a good matchup because I don't know if Jair Alexander is ever coming back. Jacksonville Jaguars, the Cardinals, Seattle, Minnesota, Baltimore. All right, so extreme, extremely medium, extra medium type schedule going forward, in my opinion. So nothing to really be scared about there. Uh, Van Jefferson kills any fantasy value he had. He's droppable. Tyler Higby, same. He wasn't really rossable at this point anyways. He was like the tight end 22 in fantasy points per game. Darrell Henderson, I mean, I don't think it's like a massive impact to Darrell Henderson. Maybe they lean a little bit more towards the pass going forward. In my eyes, Darrell Henderson is definitely still an RB1. He's a lead back in an offense that's scoring the fifth most points in the NFL at this point. Um, so OBJ, I'm holding him. I'm holding him in redraft. I'm holding holding him in dynasty. Um, I think he's going to be a very, very startable f- flex play as soon as week 12. And I think he's going to have a few ceiling weekly games left in him this year. Stafford and McVay together, man, it's beautiful. And the people that just like go around calling everybody fake sharps are like have no idea what they're talking about. Like McVay was a fake sharp for a long time. I know Cliff Kingsbury doesn't do exactly what you want to do all the time. He's a fake sharp, but he's like fucking literally the head coach of a team that's eight and one. Like shut shut your fucking mouth and just watch the beauty of the Rams offense play out with Odell Beckham Jr. Now in the mix. Let's talk about Cam Newton to the Panthers. This is a tweet that I posted yesterday. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Nick Ercolano. Cam Newton had 23 plus fantasy points in five games last year. In the three game, and he played 15, so 33% of the games, one third of his games. In the three games before he got clapped up, and by clapped up, I mean he caught the vid. He averaged 24.5 fantasy points per game. That's a three-game sample size, so it's small, but still, nonetheless. And you look at the receiving core, man. Everyone knows this is a played-out narrative, but Jacoby Myers is the leading wide receiver there with 
434 yards. The lows were low for Cam. He had a lot of bad games, and a lot of it, I feel like, had to do with coming back from COVID. He said multiple times that he didn't feel the same afterwards. Moving over to Carolina, that's uh, that's wildly more friendly of an offense for fantasy quarterbacks than you know whatever you would call what the New England offense was last year. Now, he's not going to play in Week 10. They already said P.J. Walker is the starter. After Week 10, they get Washington. In Week 11, they get Miami. In week 12, a bye, the Falcons, Bills, whatever. You can look at the schedule. I expect Cam to take over as a starter as soon as he's up to speed with Joe Brady's offense. Um, there's no reason for them to sign him otherwise. I think Cam will legitimately be useful for fantasy. Like If, he's in, if you're in a super flex league, you obviously went and picked him up, hopefully. Um, wait for him to start, and you'll get some good rushing upside there. If uh, if you're in a one-quarterback league, like he's definitely not trustable as a top-12 streamer at this point yet. But who knows, man? By the time they roll around to like Atlanta... In, in after their buy or even Miami a week before that, like he could be usable, man. He could be usable. The bigger questions probably here are like, what happens to C Mac? What happens to DJ Moore? For C Mac, I mean, we have a sample size of, of them two playing together. If you don't remember, Cam Newton was the Carolina Panthers quarterback for a long time, and they played two years together. Almost three years, but two years. 2017 is rookie year, 2018 is sophomore year, and then only two games of 2019. Here's the splits in and out. Now, don't don't just look at the fantasy points. Like obviously without Cam, he was much higher. What I'll say is like the first year included his rookie stats, which are always going to be skewed a little bit downward compared to like career stats there. What I'm looking at though, and what excites me is that even with that involved, Cam Newton threw the ball to Christian McCaffrey 7.5 times per game. So while yes, it looks a little bit lower down from 8.75, which was on pace for a record breaking 140 targets, still seven and a half targets per game from Cam Newton 5.81 receptions per game from Cam Newton. Um, so, you know, and those rushing numbers are way down because of the rookie year where he didn't really rush the ball so much. All I'm looking at right now is to make sure that Cam Newton's going to dump the ball off to him anymore, right? He's not as mobile as he once was, so I don't imagine him scrambling too often. I think this offense still completely runs through C-Mac when he's back. The only question is his health. So it didn't really matter whether it was Sam Darnold, P.J. Walker, Cam Newton. I think they're all going to run through C-Mac. They're all going to dump off the ball to him fucking eight times a game. Um, so as long as C-Mac's healthy, this move doesn't really affect Christian McCaffrey for him. He can't get any worse than what Sam Darnold was doing, right? And speaking on that, like DJ Moore, right? Can't get any worse for him than what Sam Darnold was doing. He was off to such a hot start. And then Sam Darnold basically turned his ass into a ghost, right? You look at the splits. 18.8 half PPR points per game, down almost uh, down 10 and a half from that. 22.7 PPR points per game, down to 10.7 over the last, whatever, six weeks. The the left side of that in split is weeks one to four. Now, what I'll say with more is like, if prior to this trade, if it was Sam Darnold under center, like how excited would I be about DJ Moore going forward rest of the season? It would be like a five and a half out of 10, maybe. This might move it up to like a six out of 10. It's like incremental definitely not huge but like again it can't get any worse than what Sam Darnold was doing there in Carolina I would say like even if I'm excited for Cam Newton in fantasy it's going to be hard to be excited about more but last year like Cam force fed Jacoby Myers in targets right he had a dominator rating of like 30 percent which was top eight in the NFL without scoring any touchdowns which is super impressive so we could see something similar man but again I just imagine the offense completely still running through Christian McCaffrey and Cam Newton maybe like an RPO type kind of thing going on there Christian McCaffrey fine Cam Newton kind of excited about it just as a as a player and maybe a little bit of fantasy because I play in all super flex leagues CJ Moore doesn't really change much for me and definitely there's nothing I I don't give a fuck about Robbie Anderson at all that's all I got for y'all today so again make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new we'll be dropping videos like this every single day make sure you go watch today's fade the public episode which dropped at like 8 a.m we uh we tried guessing OBJ's landing spot didn't turn out pretty uh but yeah subscribe make sure you turn notifications on so you know when our videos go out and hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. I love y'all. I'm out. Enjoy your Friday nights. Don't get too trashed, but enjoy some margaritas for you, boy. Love you.